I have a problem with my Rikon 7220 VSR lathe. This is the on-off button or switch or paddle. And if you listen, whenever you pull the paddle, you hear a click, right? And that's not a relay click because it's unplugged. But if I push it in, I should hear the same click. And I don't. When I plug the lathe in, doesn't matter if the switch is on or off, the lathe runs. So there's actually no way to shut it off short of pulling the power cord. So I've unbolted it from my lathe bench and I'm going to take a look inside of the control box. I've got my lathe laying on its back and I'm looking at the control box here. There are a couple of screws in the control box here and there's uh, one up in here. But I think to get the control box out, I think I probably need to undo these screws at the side. That's likely what's holding it on to the rest of the lathe. So I'm going to take those screws out and find out. Those screws were for the control box. So I undid the two screws here and the whole control box pulled out. I had to cut a cable tie, a zip tie that was up here. Those screws, by the way, require an Allen wrench. Fortunately, my Rikon bandsaw actually had the right size Allen wrench as a part of its toolkit, which is stuck to the back of the saw, so that's nice. So, lots of sawdust got down there and even a micro mesh pad. I took the four screws out of the lid for the control box and I'm taking a look. So some sawdust is in there, so I'll be sure to get that out of there. But it doesn't look like any got into the switch. So I think the switch itself is the problem. Now I just have to figure out how to actually take this off. I wonder if it's underneath this tape here. Sure enough, I took off the tape and there is a little thing that I can push, a little tab here. There might be one on the other side. Yep, feels like there is. So I should just be able to use a slot screwdriver and push that down and then release this whole front control panel. Sure enough, those clips were the answer. There's actually three of them. There's one on the left side, and then there's one, two, on the right side of it. So now, this is the power switch. I should be able to unplug these cables, remove the switch, and see if the switch itself is faulty. And the two connectors just slid right off. I don't remember what style of connector these are called. I'm not, not an electrician, but I see them in a lot of things. My stove, for example, uh, uses that uh, style of connector to hook up to the element. It looks, too, like all I have to do is kind of pry these plastic bits back very gently, and that whole switch should just come right out. The switch is actually a deceptively simple design. There's a little spring-loaded peg here, and so when I flip, when the switch is down in the off position, the peg sits up. And when I flip the switch into the on position, so I flip the, the switch up, it actually inverts the peg, so the peg goes to the down position, and that peg seems to rub in here. And there's a piece of metal on a seesaw type of thing. And uh, so it seems to push the seesaw into the contact, right? There's one contact right behind this lead. The camera would focus on it behind this lead here. And so when the switch gets flipped up, the peg goes down, which pushes the switch into there. And then when you flip the switch down, the peg goes up and it's supposed to push it off of the lead. And for whatever reason, in my case, it wasn't pushing it off of the lead. I'm going to take a look at it and clean it up and see if it will work without me having to buy a replacement. All I did was just make sure that that little piece of metal that rocks on a teeter-totter was cleaned up. And uh, there was really nothing dirty about it, but it didn't seem like it was seated in there right. Like somehow it, you know, it, uh, it came out of its position. So I got it put back in and now if we listen, we hear the click when it opens, and then we hear the click when it closes. I'm going to grab my multimeter and check for continuity. need about three hands for this. 
So I've got my multimeter leads touched to the, um, you know, to the things on the switch. So now I flip the switch up. We hear the multimeter saying we've got continuity. And it turns off. I think we're in business. I'm going to put it back together and see if my lathe behaves properly. I also put some electrical tape back where there had been some that I took off. I didn't have any black on hand, but I have this uh, CSA approved, because we're in Canada here, uh, red electrical tape. So I just did a stripe around it. And I think that all that was doing was just keeping sawdust and sanding dust from uh, getting in here because there is a there is a small bit of a gap. Before I put it all the way back together, I want to do a test just to make sure that the motor will start and stop. It's plugged in, so that's actually a really good sign because when I plugged it in before, the motor would start running immediately. Before doing anything, I actually took the belt off that way that the motor can fire up. I didn't want the spindle to fire up because the lathe is laying down. So let's see. Beauty. And now the proof is in the pudding. Look at that. Fantastic. Bet you even it even goes in reverse. Yep. I recognize the motor sound in reverse. In case you're wondering about the error code 5 that's on there, it's because my speed sensor is not currently working. That's located inside of the headstock. There's two screws here, and it sits inside. And I think, I think that it basically, um, I think it basically uses the gaps in the index wheel here. Um, but it's uh, it's not currently working. But I don't mind. I know the speed ranges, and uh, I know what feels right for turning. So I'm not too worried about that. Looks like the power switch is fixed without a service call to Rikon, without having to order a new part, and hopefully this uh, hopefully this fix holds. If it doesn't, then I'm going to order a new switch for it, but in the meantime, I'm back up and turning. Just to give a few wrap-up thoughts on the repair, the lathe is really easy to repair. It was very easy to get at the control box, just a couple of screws, and the control box is very well laid out. The manual describes what every cable is, where it goes, how to hook everything back up. It's a well-written manual. It's a well-built lathe. I'm very happy with it. No complaints at all. I'm not worried about something having a little bit of a hiccup and needing a little bit of repair. I am worried about how easy it is to repair. And this was pretty easy.